Hello everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We're going to be talking Chanel's new number 22, well, without the number, Chanel's 22 bag. Ha! Huh. Coming out this spring summer 2022. Yo guys, subscribe to my channel, thumb up this video, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, join me on Patreon, Super Jacob all spelled together there as well. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday. You're all more than welcome to join and partake in the convo. Here you are, my loves. So we're talking Chanel 22 bag. And, um... Yeah, okay. So, as we were saying a couple of weeks ago already, you know, uh, 2022 uh, is a special year. 2021 marked the 100th birthday of Chanel number 5. And Chanel made a huge celebration about... Number five. Mm, 2022, pardon me, Wendy Williams moment. Um, Chanel, uh, Chanel's number 22 perfume is celebrating 100 years of existence. So number 22 has been around for 100 years. I don't think Chanel is going to celebrate it like it did number five because Chanel number 22 isn't as famous as number five, although Chanel number 22 should be as famous as 25 because it is a masterpiece of a fragrance. I have it there to the side right now as we speak, actually. But, so, Chanel is going a different route. They don't really care about the number 22 perfume because if you notice, back in 2019, what did they release? Uh, Carl's last swan song of a bag. The 19 bag, which was launched in 2019. You see what they're doing there? Every time there's like some special number for Chanel history, they launch a bag. That's kind of the new route they're going. They also launched the 31 bag, but it wasn't a particular a particular year. They just launched it back in 2017, relaunched it. It's a bag that already existed in the 80s and 90s. But they launched the 31 bag that kind of flopped, so they stopped making it. Then in 2019, they launched the 19 bag, which is still selling well for them. And now this year, they're launching the 22 bag. Now, let's have a look at the 22 bag. I have photos for you guys. So, uh, okay. So, I'm going to shift to the side. All right. Wait, hold on. Let me just move the chair a little. Ooh, child, let me tell you. All right. So, this is where it's at. Um, it is a lamb skin. Uh, will they also have a goat skin? Or is it going to turn into a calf skin? This kind of looks like lamb to me, but again, we were just talking in another segment, another video that I was filming. We were talking about the collaboration, uh, L'Enfant for Batman, Balma with Barbie. Yeah, I mean, if this isn't Chanel for Barbie, I don't know what is. We were also talking about uh, Loewe with uh, Studio Ghibli, uh, which is uh, Spirited Away in this case. So this is kind of Chanel's pink. Now we know, as we know, Chanel really sells their pinks, like hotcakes, like pink hotcakes. Most chicks out there love their Chanel hues of pink. They just go crazy. Chanel churns out pink all the time because they know bitches be buying pink like crazy. So this is the 22 bag. It's a relatively big pouchy slouchy bag. It's like a shopper. It's relatively big. The models on the spring summer 2022 Pret-a-Porter Chanel runway were wearing these bags. It's <laughs> olfactive story says, I agree. It looks like a pouch for samples. It's a big one though. Alina says, will I get kicked out of the fashion bunker for saying I hate it? Of course you won't, Alina. Of course you can say you hate the bag. Um, and in fact, the first time I saw it on the runway, I also thought, eh, lame, you know. But, and I also don't like the fact that the Chanel, spelled out Chanel logo, is actually metal. And each one of them are perforating the leather. So I think they're screwed on. So you have this kind of leather bits that are screwed on through, they're not glued, they're probably screwed on, through holes in the leather, which makes it like so, because you know, if you, if you, if the bag goes and kicks something by accident and that, you know, that L from Chanel bends outwards, like something can slide in between it and the bag. And then if it breaks, I, I see a big potential for that Chanel, for those metal letters to pop off 
for the area around them to get scratched or damaged. Like I really see potential there for, for drama to happen as well as that coin, that little medallion bit hanging uh, from the strap. Uh, you know that thing is going to get tangled in your hair, depending on how high or low you put it. You know that thing is just going to be a nuisance. Uh, so you're always going to have to think, like, where is that little medallion hanging? Because, you know, Chanel doesn't make anything detachable. Heaven forbid you were to have an extra little med If you buy such an expensive bag, heaven forbid they were to give you a detachable medallion that you could use to make a little charm out of it as a necklace. or No, heaven forbid. No, 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 no. Chanel wants you to spend another $4,000 on the necklace version. So we get it, Chanel. You're greedy. Um, but so that medallion, nah, I would have actually really enjoyed it simply without the medallion, without the Chanel uh, metal thing, just that pouch with that oversized matelassé quilting moment um, with that Chanel chain, honestly. Let me show you the next colorways. This is navy blue. It almost looks like a smaller version. I don't know if they're going to make several sizes of this. They probably are. They always do. Um, I love how glossy, how, how glazed the leather looks. It's very supple. Oh, it makes my mouth water, actually. So let me take a little sippy of my coffee in my Super Deco merch glass. Get it at www.superdacob.com. I'm living for the gold hardware. I'm living for the fact that they're going back to gold hardware. You know, they're not doing the pale gold. No, it's too tacky. We're just going to do the pale, delicate, darling champagne gold. This is going back to old school yellow gold. And as I said, the first time I saw it on the runway a couple of months ago, I was like, eh, this ain't it. But I'm kind of living for it. I'm, I'm kind of living for it. I, I Because listen, let me tell you, another bag that when it came out the first time, I was like hating it. And now I swear to God, this is the only Chanel bag where I literally bite my own lips for, uh, for not having gotten it. Guess which one? You'll never guess. I'm going to tell you. The girl bag. I hated it with a passion when it came out. Now I'm so sad I didn't get one. And I would have gotten two of them. I would have gotten the one that's full on lambskin. And then I would have gotten one in tweed. You know, the girl bag, it was like made, it was cut like a Chanel jacket and the sleeves were elongated and sewn in upwards. So you tie them around, like it was like a crossbody pouchy bag. So Chanel jacket turned into a bag. Um, I'm, I love that bag now. I love uh, the girl bag and I wish I would have gotten it. This one, of course, is very different, much more simple. It, it, this is, has nothing genius about it. This bag is just a boring bucket bag bucket looking bag that we've seen a thousand times before but the fact that it's like kind of so simple i'm kind of living for it as i said i would take away the chanel logo just to make the bag more resistible to damage because it's metal that chanel inscription is metal and they can pop off and they're just screwed on you know mm. plus the dust the dust would collect there in between it ain't it if it were just that leather oh it's so luscious i don't know i'm kind of living for it what do you guys think uh, Rebecca says, I don't hate it, uh, or in the shiny black and the rich gold, I'd have to hold it in real life. And then you would run for it. All right, let me show you the next picture. We will get to the black one. You wanted black, you got black, Rebecca. Uh, you see how the gold reflects, so that Chanel looks white. It's gold. It's the same hardware as the actual chain. Um, there's something almost like vinyl, patent vinyl about this thing. It's very giving me SM vibes, you know what I mean? Debbie says, in the photos, they look like pleather on my screen. It's a very shiny, glossy leather. It has a glazing on it. So they do look like vinyl, but they're not. They are leather, you guys. Um, yeah, Louis says, this looks like a shopping bag. I love it, but how much, Sharon? Uh, it's going to be around 4,000 euro. Four to 5,000 euro. So there you have it. It's, it's really not affordable at all. A bag like this, I would say 
entry level price for Chanel to see if the bag does well. If it does well, then they can keep making it and keep upping the price like they always do. My may I remind you when the Gabriel, the Gabriel bag came out in 2017, um that basic model was like under 3000 euro. It was like 2900 euro. Now it's like over 4000. Um so this thing to launch it for the first time, it's a very simple bag. This is not hard to make. You 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 just you don't charge four thousand or five thousand euro for it. You just don't. You just don't. Um, but they do, and they think they can get away with it. And I think it's way overpriced for what it is. Yes, it's a big amount of leather. It's a big bag, you guys. This is not a tiny bag. This is one of those bags that hangs on your side, and it's a big bag, right? But three thousand euro is kind of a realistic price. It's kind of a 3,000 for Chanel standards. Okay. Uh, Chrissy Gordon says, Jesus, I was joking when I said 5K and now you're mentioning 4 to 5K. Oh God. Yeah, Chrissy. <laughs> Careful what you joke about. It might just come true as they say. No, I know the, the say is different. It's careful what you wish for. It might just come true. But the same applies to jokes as we've seen today. Uh, Louis gives them $100. For $100, they won't even slap you, Louis. Uh, even a slap at Chanel costs more. Oli says, I will need to try it on. It might look fab on. That's the point, Oli. I think this little bag looks fabulous on. I, I really think it's just so leger, so nonchalant. It's just there. And because of that, I want one. Do I want to pay the price for one? Hell no. Hell no. Olive Oil says, I hate the Chanel in white. It makes it look like a blown up makeup bag. It's not in white, Olive Oil. It's in gold. It's gold. It's just like the chain, like I said before. It just reflects light that way. On this picture, it looks white. It's not white. It's gold. It's just the angle in which the photo was taken. I won't pay 5K for inevitable ripped chain openings, says Jack. Now, I think those chain openings are not going to rip because when you wear the bag, it, 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 it bends itself in itself so that actually those openings... They turn upwards. They turn upwards. I don't think it's going to... Well, I mean, if you stress... And the bag is big. And you know me. I'm a bitch that fills a bag. You give me a big bag, I will stuff it to the brim. You give me a little bag, I can I can live with a little bag. I'm not... But I'll stuff it to the brim. So the problem that I have... Let's move to the next photo. The problem that I have... Uh, I love this color, you guys. It matches the background of the fashion bunker. This lilac... This is where it's at. I'm sorry, but I want the, I want this bag. I, I really want it. I like I want it. <laughs> I want it. I want the black one too. But I like this color a lot. But anyway, so um it's a big bag. You're gonna stuff it. I would, you know, uh, because it's big. And then what? And then what Jack is saying would come to be. Because it would rip if, if it's overweight, if you put too much shit in it, it might strain the openings too much, you know. So you got to be very careful to not overstuff this bag. But it cute, it cute. Oh, it's calling my name, you guys. It's calling my name. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, yeah, it's talking, you guys, it's talking to me right now. It's telling me to buy it. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh man, Paris Samara says lavender is a a a, a D D L G fantasy. I I don't know that abbreviation. <laughs> Love the lilac, but still not the bag. I think that's all the colors I got for you. Um, maybe there's one more, and I think that's all the colors. There will be more colors. There is a white one, complete white that is also really beautiful. Uh, Barbara, thank you for subscribing, Barbara Barbara Claire. There is a um. Oli says, get the sack, Jacob. Girl, I ain't going to drop 5K on this thing. For sure not. It ain't worth it. Like, there's nothing intricate about it. There's nothing, like, complex about it. It's such a simple construction. It's way too simple of a construction to cost that much, you guys. That's the bottom line. Like, give me something super complex, and then we can talk about it. Like this. Okay. Away with you, 22. Geet! Geet! Don't tantalize us anymore. One of the loves of my life, and I'm showing you this one in particular. I took it out of the archives uh, because, first of all, it has the little dangly medallion bit, charm, which is a bit similar to the 22. Second reason, because 
uh, where's my mic? It's over there. Second reason, oh God, it's so difficult to be both my bag and I. Second reason because the it's a seasonal bag from the cruise Korea Cruise 2016 collection. Another reason it's so rare because it is a de-stressed lambskin, not calfskin. This is a lambskin and de-stressed, super thick, wonderful, wonderful. I mean, look at this beauty. It's a single flap. It's a seasonal bag. This is one of the examples of Chanel seasonal bags where, where I say, sure, this wasn't a new invented bag. It's a size medium. If it were a double flap, it would be a medium. It's not like one of those bags where you say, oh, they invented a brand new shape just for that season. However, it is kind of a tweaked version of the Timeless Classic because the flap is a little bit lower. You can see that this little um, um, tongue bit is almost to the bottom of the bag. On the medium, it would be a little bit higher. So, And it is a single flap, right? So uh, when we open it, um, you access the bag immediately. Now, oh, look at the leather on the inside. I love this texture. Look at it. It's like, it's like an ocean. This, ah, uh, ah, uh, can we, ah, uh, look how the gold is reflecting. This is aged gold hardware, by the way. Can we just, this is not painted on. This is the texture of the freaking de-stressed lambskin, you guys. This is how gorgeous this is. And it, and it translates onto uh, the uh, chevron um, quilted uh, pattern as well. And uh, there is no pocket in the back. It's super simple. You know what I mean? It's very, very simplified. I live for a simple moment. But also with this bag, I always be have, have to be very, very, very conscious of this little giblet here. Because if you don't pull the strap right, you're going to pull this right into that hole. And you're going to pop this off. It's going to break. So you always have to be conscious of where the dangly bits are. And that's the same issue you're gonna have with the 22 bag. So be very careful, you guys. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. But oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. And this bag I've had since, um, yeah, 2016. It came out 2016. Did I say 2017? I meant 2016. So I've had it for six years now. And this is one of my most used Chanel bags. I love it. It is so easy to use. Look at this. No scuffs on the corners. Nothing. Nothing. This bag, of course I baby it. I take care of it. It's a squishy little thing uh, because it... Um, look at that perfection. This bag is really... You you know, you you squish it here, right? You hold it. And this is the type of bag I hold under my armpit usually. And I kind of let the chains just fall out. Super elegant that way. Um, there have been people reporting that their gold hardware chips. Mine didn't. So the only issue that I have with this bag is that the grommets, they're not rounded inwards like the Timeless Classics, but they are kind of, they have a sharper edge. And this is a problem because that can't, with time, damage the leather. Because if you keep pulling it in and out, these kind of sharper edges on the grommets, they can affect the leather. And they do. They do a little. So you got to always baby it. Um, I do not use any creams on this bag. I never did. All I do is, you know, it has its microfiber pouch that I kind of, you know, pass over it to buff it a little bit. And the rest is just my own skin skin oils and I use it a lot and I train the leather you know so it gets my own fat <laughs> on transferred onto it and uh, that's how I use it so this to me is way better than the 22 bag and this is the ultimate reason why I'm showing it to you this is how I fight my Chanel FOMO whenever I see a bag from Chanel that I'm like a new bag and that is really cool that I would want to have um but with the new prices that they have, I don't want to. I don't want to give Chanel that money anymore for their bags. So what I do is first I try to make a list of pros and cons, like I did with you guys, telling you like how bad that hardware might fall off the Chanel spelling, blah blah blah. And then the second thing I do is I take a Chanel bag, a seasonal Chanel bag that I love very much, that I already own. I take that, and then I re-acknowledge how beautiful it is. I tell it how wonderful it is. I tell it how much I love it. And how special it is to me. And then all of a sudden, the other new bag, kind of that FOMO and that like desire for owning it, vanishes. 
it vanishes because I see what I already have. And I kind of rem remind myself like, hey, this, I love this bag so, so, so much. It, I love this beauty so much. And I'm like, oh, I don't need the other one. Poof. And all of a sudden, and just like that, the need vanished. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have thumb it up, subscribe to my channel and join me for my live streams every Saturday. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.